Well, hi there. We have arrived at the Australian Reptile Park, which required us to survive a really, really long plane ride and me learning how to drive on the left side of the road in downtown Sydney, which was absolutely terrifying, but hopefully it's all been worth it. Let's go check it out. Tasmanian devils. This is my first time ever seeing them. I just got to pet one of the babies. This is a great day. I've come here to Australia and this Cooper who works here is like, Clint, I'm in Australia. I have a friend in Australia. I love this place. It is so great. This is showing off both color phases of the lace monitors oh, really wow. well. I think this is probably the best pet monitor in the world, at least for a big monitor. I, I wish they weren't like $10,000 in the United States. But I think they're starting to get more common because people are breeding. I think the banded one is called the Bell's Phase. I think there are echidnas in here. It's an echidna. They're monotremes. So this is an egg-laying mammal. The echidnas and the platypus are the only egg-laying mammals we have left on Earth because Australia is a special place, we've still got them. First echidna. This is a quokka. They're a, a tiny little kangaroo relative, and they're amazing. Look at how cute it is. This is how big it is. First really coarse. Look, it's got a tail, kind of like a rat. This is the true kangaroo rat. It makes Big Daddy look small. We just put down new grass, so we're trying to keep it good. <laughs> good luck with that. Because he comes out here every time and eats it. So uh, I'm trying to get him. <laughs> There are a couple of different shell varieties in yeah. the Galapagos. And there's one of them that they're ground feeders. Their shell is more domed. Yeah. And there's the saddleback uh, tortoises that they're, they feed more up high. And it, it varies based on the island. And so I think he's more the saddleback. So he goes 69 years old. It's quite young for a Galapagos tortoise, actually. <laughs> Hope we get these guys up around 200 year old mark. Got anything planned for his 200th birthday? <laughs> This is Hugo the giant Galapagos land tortoise. Sometimes he's that naughty, we have to actually lift him back. Yeah, how much does he weigh? He weighs, uh, recently weighed 170, 178 kilos. Just patting for me. So he's a male Galapagos tortoise, and at the end of the year, we're actually getting a female for him. Oh. So hopefully we'll have some breeding action. She's coming from Germany, I believe. Welcome. Thank you. Gila Monsters, if you want to go all the way to Australia to see one of the coolest animals we've got in the United States, there they are. This right here is a saltwater crocodile, which might be the coolest animal in the world, no big deal. Hi, you. Look at the baby alligators. They're so cute. Oh my goodness. I love alligators so much. Why do they have to be so pleasant? Look at this cute little friend on the log. This is a Parenti, which is an awesome desert monitor. One of my favorites. I remember always seeing them on Crocodile Hunter. I love them. These here are Australian frilled dragons. This is a Fijian iguana. He's shedding, which is too bad because they're one of the prettiest iguanas in the world. And we don't have them as pets in the United States, but they do in Europe and a lot of other places, and I'm pretty jealous. 
So this is Cooper, Coop's Reptiles, which he talks about all kinds of rad Australian reptiles. So basically everything we can never talk about. Yeah. And he spotted us here at the Australian Reptile Park. Yep. And he's been just super nice and super helpful. Definitely go check out his channel. And, and together, I think we're gonna check out a whole bunch of cool things, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, let's do it. Wow. Yeah, they're cool. So these are netted dragons? Tell me more. Central Tell me more. netted dragons. So these guys live out sort of central Australia. Basically, often the same sort of areas as bearded dragons. Mm -hmm. And you can see they like that sandy environment. They live in around spin effects. They, uh, these guys actually dig burrows. So they'll dig right down. And that's basically how they yeah, escape predators, the heat of the day and that. These guys, they eat a bit of vegetation, but mostly insects. Yeah. And males grow bigger than females. We have, I think it's just males in here actually, or one female. And males get big, woofy head, big um, bulges around the tail, and they get maybe a third bigger than females. Yeah, they're really beautiful little dragons. Mm -hmm. Part of the for group, which are some of the smallest dragons in Australia. I love them. Yeah. They're amazing. I'm jealous. Yeah. These are Rankin's dragons. We've really only got two bearded dragons that we have access to. And this is one of them. This might actually be the better of the two as a pet. So cool. Absolutely. I've got one at home. I've had it for 10 years now. Very nice. And so easy. I love Such them. Such personal little critters. I love them. These, they look excellent. And a few of them in here actually grab it at the moment. So yeah, yeah that one there on the top. And they've been digging and laying and stuff. We get babies every year. That's so cool. And are these are at least related to the Gidgees. Are these Gidgees? Yep. No, these are Hosmas. Hosmas. Okay. Gidgees. Yeah, basically the next closest thing to a Gigi. They have the longer tail in yeah. all other respects. They're uh, pretty much the same. Gigi's are their only relatives that I've really seen in person. And mm -hmm. so to me, they're all Gigi's. Yeah. Holy cow, what are these? I've never seen these before. So they are the night skinks. And <laughs> yeah, they're really interesting. Those they're are so cool. They dig these big burrow systems. They live out in the deserts, obviously. Are they social? And, um, yeah, they like living together like that. Um, very calm with each other. Yeah, often just, they just love burrowing everywhere. Those are awesome. Yeah, Do people really keep those as well? They're really not common in captivity Okay. in private, but um, people that do have them just absolutely love them. Yeah, they yeah. seem spe really special. That head, Yeah. it's so cool. This is the fierce snake. <laughs> Potentially the most venomous snake in the world. Arguably produces the most toxic venom any snake in the world. Although, I have just recently learned here at the Australian Reptile Park that they have never been attributed with a human fatality. This is a death adder. And death adders are really cool because they've got a very, very viper-like head shape and movable fangs. But they are elapids. Convergence. Stinking rad. This is an eastern brown snake. Steve Irwin would say, Dinja, Dinja, Dinja. One of the most venomous snakes in Australia. The lapids are funny because they look so much like colubrid snakes. They are not. Do I have to put my teeth? But these are Australian red backed spiders. A walking stick. Colossal, enormous walking stick. This is my first time holding a shingleback skink. I just saw my first one ever when I went to Tinley, but they're like $10,000 in the United States. And so he wasn't letting people hold it for some reason. This is amazing. Look at that head and tail. You tell me which is which. And these guys in Australia, I don't know about overseas, they have a lot of different common names. They obviously shingleback, two-head lizard, people call them pine cone. Snakes. Yes, for uh, some reason. Bobtails, sleepy lizards, all sorts. But um, yeah, shinglebacks is generally what you hear in this part of Australia anyway. It's emu day. Right over here is another Australian water dragon. There was one in with the saltwater crocodile. They're just running around here. These are just wild water dragons. So much fun. 
There are just wild lorikeets flying around. Oh, they're everywhere. Look at this amazing place. There are flying foxes. I love flying foxes. This pigeon didn't look like much at first, and then you see the iridescence poking through on that wing. That's quite a thing. Look at the koalas. They got tons and tons of koalas. I want to hold a koala. This is a koala, getting to pet a koala. And koalas, as you probably know, are marsupials. And here in Australia, they've got marsupials and they've got the prototherians, the monotremes, which are the egg-laying mammals. And those are groups of mammals that have pretty much persisted only in Australia. And, and the thing is, because of the type of placenta that they have, they're actually born really, really small. And it means that they have to nurse for a really, really long time. And so they reproduce very slowly. And that is why they're outcompeted by the, the placental mammals, the therian, the eutherian mammals, almost everywhere else in the world. But here in Australia, there are no native eutherians. Even the dingoes were introduced by humans. Stinking rat. This is a tawny frog mouth. Look at how pleasant they are. You can just walk right up to them. You're amazing. Hi. What a special bird. <laughs> Those are boobook owls. And these guys on the ground are probably eastern grass owls. This kookaburra is up in the old gum tree. King of the bushes, he. So this is a, a fern, I think it's a staghorn fern, and you can see both the gametophyte and the sporophyte generation all growing there together. That's why there's two totally different looks to this fern. One of them is haploid and the other is diploid. No big deal. So here in Australia, we're actually only allowed to keep native animals privately as pets, so here at Reptile Park, we get to see a lot of different exotic animals, which is a great treat. So hopefully you know what this is. Alligator. American alligator, very good. Female American alligator. This is Rosie, like I said. She was hand raised by Ranger Mick. He's uh, one of the educational people here at the park. And uh, she's like a little puppy dog. Very tame, very good. So this is Fluffy. She's a Burmese python. We don't want people near the head, just in case. <laughs> I'm here now with peaches who is a gray kangaroo. I wanted to talk about kangaroos because they're awesome. Kangaroos actually can't move their back legs independently, so they can't walk. But their hopping locomotion is the most efficient way that any animal runs on the planet. They store almost all the energy from their previous leap in the tendons in their legs, and so it takes almost no energy, and they can hop like that for hours and hours and hours almost effortlessly which is stinking rad, but when they want to walk around at slow speed, they've got to use their front legs and they do kind of a tripod gait. And they, you'll notice they'll move both back legs together and they'll use their tail. It's a crazy walk because they have to be walking fast or they can't really walk at all. Isn't that right? Well, I have had an incredible day here. We only had one day in Australia, and we decided to spend it at the Australia Reptile Park, and we have not been disappointed. Um, I've seen, like, every cool Australian reptile that I know of and tons that I didn't know of. Birds, the birds are everywhere. I've seen cockatoos and parrots and Everything just flying around, just wild here. I, I've got to hang out with kangaroos, and I got to pet a koala, I got to pet a Tasmanian devil, I got to pet a crocodile. 
It's a wonderful, wonderful place. It's the kind of place that I dream zoos would be because it's big enough that you can really explore. You can spend the day here and be discovering new things the whole time. Yet it's small enough that, you know, there's, there's not a big crowd. You can be all by yourself for a long time and, and just discover new things. And um, I wish there were more places like this in the world. I've loved it here. Thanks for having us. I definitely recommend, if you're in the greater Sydney area, definitely make the journey up to the Australian Reptile Park. You will not be disappointed. This place is really, really cool, and we've had a blast. This is a great place. Come here. More kangaroos. There are kangaroos. Look. There are kangaroos. They're just kangarooing about. This is how they mow. I love Australia. Can I catch you? Do you want to go hang out with a kangaroo? It doesn't get any better than the Australian reptile park. I don't think I'm going to get tired of petting kangaroos anytime soon. <laughs>